Hey everyone, it's Maddie. Um, how are you doing today? I hope you're doing well. Today, I'm excited because I'm gonna be recommending you some of my favorite horror movies. We're all sort of needing to stay at home right now and what better way to spend the time than to watch some of your favorite horror movies or some new gems, find some new gems. I'm going to tell you which streaming services they are. I have a variety, so I have some on Netflix, some on Hulu, some on Prime, and some on Shudder. And if you've never heard of Shudder, it's made by, um, I think it's owned by AMC, and it's a horror, thriller, suspense um, streaming platform. Now, I am not sponsored by them, okay? But they have released a code for people um, right now to have 30 days free trial. So I will put it right here. It's shut in, I think is what it is. I'll put it right here. I'll put a link down below, 30 days free. Um, you know, don't forget after 30 days, if you don't want it to cancel your subscription. I will tell you though, I think it's like $4.99 or $5.99 a month and I really like it. So I am a subscriber, I have been for a while. Again, not sponsored, but if you wanna watch some of these movies, they're on Shutter. First things first, we are drinking a slightly less cold than I wanted it to be, beer called Dawn of the Red. I thought there was nothing better for this video pairing than Dawn of the Red. Um, this is a Red India Pale Ale, Red IPA. I think I've had this one before. I can't remember if I liked it, but when I was at the liquor store, I was like, yeah, I gotta have that. Which is probably how they got me last time, to be quite honest. I'm not gonna lie. They get me with the labels, like, come on. It's amazing. All right, let's try it. Oh yeah, I do like that. It would probably taste even better if it was cold like chilled slightly. So I sort of split these up into a couple different categories. I was gonna split them up by what streaming service they were on, but then some of them were on multiples and I didn't wanna do that. So I was gonna split them up into my own categories. Take them for what you will. Okay, so the first category I wanted to talk about are like classic horror movies. And I'm not talking about like Frankenstein or Dracula, although those are good and if you're into that, black and white type of horror movie, I recommend them. But I'm talking about movies that sort of define the genre in a way and are, were sort of like firsts. Like they're like the quintessential movie classics that like I think are worth seeing. So first one here is Rosemary's Baby. Um, this is on Prime, Netflix, Hulu, it's on all of them. I don't know why, but it is, we're happy. This is following a woman, Rosemary, and her husband, and they've moved into a new apartment in New York, and weird shit's happening, and she's pregnant. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna give like my review of these movies or like too detailed of a synopsis. Um, I'll link the trailers for as many of these as I can find below so that you can look, but um, this video is going to be long enough as it is, so I don't want to go too deep into it. So that one's definitely like a an occulty possession type, not possession, an occulty devil type movie. There is a sort of a rape scene in that movie, so if you don't like that, obviously, don't watch it. Okay, the next one is The Evil Dead. Um, I wish I could recommend The Evil Dead 2 because I think Evil Dead 2 is better than The Evil Dead, but I couldn't find Evil Dead 2 streaming anywhere. The Evil Dead is about a group of friends who go to stay in a cabin in the woods and then they find this weird book. Again, there is sort of a rape scene in this involving a tree. So if you don't like that, be warned. This is more of a like comedic take on a horror film. But yeah, this is just one of those movies that I could watch a hundred million times, seriously. The next one is Halloween, um, the original 1978 version and that's on Shudder, again, Code below if you want Shutter. Not sponsored. Halloween is about Michael Myers, who um, committed a crime when he was a young boy and was trapped in a mental hospital, or not trapped, he was locked away in a mental hospital, and he gets out. He goes back to Haddonfield, um, where he's from, and starts killing people. It's an OG slasher, but I think Halloween is amazing. I watch it every year on Halloween, but 
it's not that much of a Halloween themed movie. Like they carve pumpkins in it in one short scene and you see kids trick-or-treating, but it's really not that Halloween themed. Like it just happens to be the day that, that it happens. The next movie is the creation of the current modern day zombie film. And it's Night of the Living Dead, directed by George A. Romero. It's black and white, but this movie was way ahead of its time. The main hero is a black man. It's like the zombie movie. Um, you wouldn't have Walking Dead without this movie. And it's just, it's amazing. Uh, these people are, essentially there's a zombie outbreak. These people are in a house trying to figure out what to do. Next we have one of my favorite horror movies of all time, and that is The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You're following a group of friends. How many more times will I say that in this video? Following a group of friends, I think a couple of them are siblings, and they're going to, I think two of the siblings, like grandparents old house or something. That's not important, but I think that's what it is. And they end up splitting off, and they all in some form or another come into contact with the Sawyer family. They meet Leatherface and they're just, they're just killing. They're just killing. Then we have Carrie, um, which is based on the Stephen King novel by the same name. And Carrie follows, oh, Carrie is on Prime. And Carrie follows uh, Carrie White, um, who is a high school student who is discovering that she has telekinetic abilities. And you meet her mom who is um, very religious and very controlling and you meet people at school who bully Carrie and at the end perhaps she gets some revenge on some of these people. Uh, finally for the classics we have Black Christmas um, which is on Shudder and Black Christmas it takes place in a sorority house for most of the movie and they keep getting these creepy phone calls and then one by one they start disappearing and dying and they don't really know who's doing it. It's truly not that Christmassy of a movie. You're more just following a group of people who are in this place because of, well, they live together and then other people come because of Christmas related things, but it's not really that Christmassy. You can watch any time of the year. So then I'm going to switch over to what I would consider personally to be like modern classics. One of the movies in here, I didn't have anywhere else to put. You'll see. So it ended up in here. I'm not sure if it's a modern classic yet, but we will talk about it. But these are movies that I consider to be modern classics because they're ones that I see recommended all over the place. These are like movies that created a whole new, either created a whole new era of horror or are part of a new era of horror. Um, we'll get into it though. The first movie I'm recommending is 28 Days Later. Now, this movie deals with a disease outbreak, but they turn people into like these really fast moving like zombie type creatures. So if you don't want to deal with something like that, just be warned, that's part of this movie. But essentially, that's what you're following. And you get to sort of see a breakdown of humanity in this movie, and it's amazing. Okay, so the next movie I'm going to talk about is The Descent. Um, this is a very claustrophobic movie, so if you are not into that, do not watch this movie. Seriously. But you're following a group of f five, six women, something like that, and they're going um, cave spelunking cave crawling I don't know what you call it they're going down in caves and when they're in these caves they discover that they may not be alone and that's all I'm gonna say I don't want to spoil this movie it's so good the movie we have is Insidious and let's see this one's on Netflix and this one you're following this family who have just moved into a new house I'm pretty sure I could be getting it mixed up with other people but this is like a haunting possession type movie Next we have The Strangers, um, which is a home invasion movie. Literally, that's what the whole movie is, home invasion. It's terrifying to me. The whole idea of the movie is horrifying. These people are in like a secluded cabin, so there's no one around to help them. It's, <laughs> no. And next we have Hush. Now this is the one that I didn't necessarily have a category for it, but I think this could become a modern classic because this is another home invasion movie, but I think this movie's better than The Strangers because the main character is deaf um, and I'm pretty sure she can't speak either. So she's alone 
in I think she's in like a cabin or something she rented or like her house is very secluded. She's screwed. And this man is like terrorizing her and trying to kill her. Then we have Paranormal Activity, uh, which is the quintessential found footage movie of the modern era. Like I know Blair Witch Project, but I think for people my age, we were too young to see Blair Witch Project. And I've even talked to people who have seen it since and said they didn't think it was scary. But paranormal activity is scary. You're basically following uh, Katie and Micah. Micah gets a camera and he starts recording, like has it like set up at their bed and starts recording while they sleep and weird shit starts happening. It's just like a haunting movie. Then we have The Ring, which is a movie that has haunted me my entire life. I saw this movie when I was way too young to have seen it and it still kind of scares me a little bit. This is the movie that is about a videotape that if you watch it, you will die. You will get a call immediately after it that says, you're gonna die in seven days. And it's terrifying. And there's this little girl who comes out of a well wearing a white dress and she has really long black hair and that's terrifying. The next category is possibly my favorite category because I enjoy horror movies. I'm calling this category fun romps. But these are essentially like, either horror comedies um, or like campy 80s b-list horror that you just you laugh at but it's so good it's such a good time like i just this is my favorite category i love these type of movies Ooh, next i have slumber party massacre which you're gonna find on prime and shutter and this is a movie that takes place at a slumber party with four girls and um they start getting killed and that's that's it the weapon that they use in this movie is really weird, but I don't know. This is just like a fun slasher, like good time. The next movie I have to talk to you about is Chopping Mall. Look at this cover. Like the only problem with this cover, it's very misleading. This looks like it would be a movie about somebody walking around killing people in a shop in a shopping mall the problem is this movie is about killer robots that's all i have to say it does take place in a mall watch it now next i have to recommend sleepaway camp sleepaway camp is on prime sleepaway camp it takes place at a summer camp um where a bunch of campers and counselors are dying i will tell you there is a part in this movie which could be seen as transphobic. I am not the person to speak on this. I'm not transgender myself. Keep that in mind. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but if you look up this movie and transgender, you will be able to see what I'm talking about. So just wanted to give that warning. It is what it is. The next movie is Society, uh, which is on Prime and Shudder. And I will tell you, this is one of the nastiest movies I've ever seen. Whoever came up with this, gross, just gross. This movie is about this boy who was adopted into this upper class family who is part of society, you know, the upper class society. And he feels like he doesn't necessarily fit in. And he thought that he got along really well with his sister, but ever since she had her, um, like, I think they call it like coming out party, unfortunately not gay, like, I think you become an adult. Or something I don't know rich people do but um she started acting his sister started acting different and um some of the people in his town act different and he's just trying to figure out what the hell is going on um next is reanimator which is on shutter uh this is one of my favorite movies of all time this is more of like a comedic horror movie and you're following a dr herbert west and his roommate I don't remember his name Dan maybe I think it's Dan and he thinks he has found a serum that can bring things back to life. And he is testing it on animals and perhaps people. And shenanigans happen from there. It is so funny. Okay. And the last one I have in this category is actually newer. It's the most recent film on this list. A lot of these are like 80s-ish movies. Yeah, I think most of those are from the 80s. I picked Cabin in the Woods. When I saw this movie, I fell in love. I just think it is such a wonderful deconstruction of classic horror tropes and, and the, the things that are supposed to happen in a horror movie. Um, the actors are really good. This is Chris Hemsworth before he was Chris Hemsworth. Um, this movie came out before Thor 
or it was filmed before Thor, something like that, but girl, it's good. It's so good. Um, it's hilarious. It's actually scary in some points. You get to see so many creatures. I want a hundred movies based off of this premise and you will know what I'm talking about if you watch it. The next category is a small one. I don't have very many movies in this, but this is actually my favorite genre of horror movie, which is like teen screams, like the teen horror movies, especially from the 90s are my favorite. A couple that aren't in this list that I will recommend is I Know What You Did Last Summer and Urban Legend. Oh, The Faculty too, The Faculty. Um, but I couldn't find any of those streaming anywhere, so you'll have to find them in whatever way you choose. So the first one I want to talk about is actually four films, and it is the Final Destination series. A Final Destination, the first one, is about this group of kids who are in a French class who are going to France on an airplane, and one of the kids has a premonition um, that he thinks, he it's like a vision, um, that he thinks the airplane is going to crash. And um, it does. And then people start dying who were supposed to have been on the plane but got off for a reason or another. And then the other movies follow the same sort of trend. Number two, there's a car, uh, like on the, on the freeway, there's like a car accident. And number three, there is uh, an accident on a roller coaster. I love that one. Number four, I believe, takes place at a racetrack. And number five is... I think a bridge collapses in number five. But yeah, one through four are on Hulu and Netflix. I actually think number one is not on Netflix. The next movie I have that fits into this category is Ginger Snaps, which is on Prime and Shudder. And this is a werewolf movie um, following two teenage girls. And it's just fucking amazing. They Their favorite thing to do is to take pictures of themselves pretending like they're dead and I just oh this movie's amazing then I have Scream 2 and 3 which are on Netflix unfortunately Scream 1 the first one and the fourth one aren't streaming anywhere but I mean Scream the first one is the best one that is without a fact without a doubt absolute fact it's one of my favorite horror movies of all time so if you can find it watch that then I think 4 is the next best then I have a soft spot for number three. I know people hate that one, but I do love that one. And then I think two is my least favorite personally. But I would say watch the first screen before you watch two and three, just so you know, because it's following the same main character um, for all of them. So um, then the last one, um, some people may argue this isn't horror, but I think it is. And it's The Craft, which is on Netflix. Um, this one you're following for high school girls who think they are witches and maybe they are, maybe they're not. I'm not going to tell you, but it's amazing. It's so quotable. Amazing. Let's see. Then my last category um, that I have is the more slow burn artsy type horror that a lot of it I think relies on like dread and the unknown, which totally works for me. It may not work for you, but it totally works for me. Um, so the first one on this list is Midsummer, which is on Prime. Um, this is one of my favorite movies of last year. It just blew me away. Like, I just can't. I know a lot of people didn't like this. I think perhaps a lot of people are wrong. But this movie follows um, this girl and her boyfriend and then his group of friends. And they're all going to Sweden for this Midsummer Festival. And crazy shit starts to happen. I felt this movie with my soul. Okay. Um, the next is Hereditary, which is actually made by the same guy who made Midsummer. Um, Hereditary came first. Um, I love Hereditary. You're following this family. This movie is a lot about grief and loss, and I just think if this works for me on so many levels, I just it's another one. I think Ari Aster, who made both of these movies, does a really good job with the emotional visceral like in your soul type of horror movies so if you don't connect to films that way you may not enjoy these but oh my god i loved them let's see who's next oh then we have the witch um which is a historical um horror movie it takes place during 
I think the 1700s would be my guess. I could be wrong. I'm, I'm not good at like knowing exactly what movies, like uh, I'm not good with historical dates, but you're following this family who has been kicked out of their religious community because the dad's uh, religious beliefs are too extreme for them. And so they've made a new settlement um, and there's apparently this witch in the woods who steals babies or steals children, we're not sure. The main character we're following is the daughter, and I just think the cast of this movie is amazing. The score of this movie is amazing, and it's just a very haunting, atmospheric type of horror movie. Um, the last one I'm going to recommend, um, I may have sort of shoehorned in here, but I think it works for this. It's called The House of the Devil. The House of the Devil follows this woman who gets asked to do a babysitting job. I believe it's a babysitting job. Or she's watching somebody and she's in this weird house. And that's all I'm going to tell you. I think it maybe it's a haunted house. Who knows? But yeah, those are my horror movie recommendations for stuff that is streaming right now. Just in case you are um, spending more time in your home than normal. Um, this is a time when... Uh, we can escape into realities that are not our own. And I think horror is amazing for doing that. And if you like to be scared, if you like to get your blood pumping, um, these are definitely some movies that I recommend checking out. If you have any horror recommendations for me, especially those that are streaming, please feel free to leave those below. I will always take horror recommendations, always. Um, have you seen any of these movies? What did you think of them? Did you like them? Did you hate them? Do you agree with my categorization of these movies? Let me know. Um, but yeah, that's gonna do it for me today. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. I mostly talk about books, but I think I am gonna start a horror movie series on my channel as well because it is just a love of mine and I really enjoy it. Um, but yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.